But I still think it is a form of grief. You're mourning a loss. You're mourning the the thing that you had, even if it was just your aspirations, even if you kind of thought, you know, this was the year I'm getting promoted and maybe that's been taken away from you. You're kind of still working in the same place, sort of doing the same thing and potentially not acknowledging what was lost. The question is from Thinking Focus. Hi, I'm Richard from Thinking Focus. Hi, I'm Paul from Thinking Focus. And the question today is, will holding on to the past put the future at risk? The question is from Thinking Focus, a podcast about how we sometimes get in our own way and what we can do about it. That's a really interesting question right now, isn't it? So you think about how much the world has changed you know, if you if you think about just from a work perspective, I mean, just mm. just try and narrow this down so that it isn't a four hour for our first ever four hour podcast. But <laughs> yeah. um, so we're going to narrow it down to a work. Yeah, let's get a bit more specific. Yeah. Um, you know, in January there would be lots of people who, yeah, for for want of a better word, had a real attachment to the work they were doing. They were putting effort into projects, or and the way they did the work as well. Yeah, and and yeah. and the people they worked with, the teams, all yeah. of that. And overnight, it changed. You know, yeah. March was it March twenty third, March twenty second, something like that. In the UK, everything changes. Bang. Then we're in crisis mode. So yeah. so for I don't know two to three months of just it was just get your head down, get on with what needed to be done. Hmm. Um. And so you can you can almost see now that people have come off the other side of that, a, li- a little bit tired, a little bit emotional, a little bit worn out, and, and um, I was going to say bedraggled, yeah, um, yeah, to a certain word. extent. Um, and I I think, and this is going to sound really kind of weird, um, but I think in some ways you could almost go, people are grieving. Mm-hmm. the loss of all the effort of their business, their team, their their plans, the aspirations they had, all the things they were trying to do in January. Well, I think that's, I think that's probably right uh, for certain businesses, isn't it, and for certain teams. So, you know, let's put to one side perhaps some of the businesses that have sort of thrived in this environment. But even then, they might be grieving where they were before, but in, perhaps not thought about it because they're enjoying the upside that they're seeing. But yeah. I think certainly for for lots of businesses, lots of teams, as you described, the way they did things before has gone. Um, perhaps what's also gone is maybe there's been a loss of revenue, but also um, there's, an, uh, there's perhaps months of years of hard work that went into creating something to get them to the point that they were at that all of a sudden feels like has been lost because we've got to start again and we've got to start again and do it differently. Yeah. And like, like you say, maybe I've, I've, I've built all these relationships with these customers and now I can't go and see them anymore. Um, and maybe I can't go and see them for quite a while. So how do I do that? So, so I think there is perhaps a grieving for what I created before or what we had before that's, that seems to have disappeared. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure what it's going to look like going forwards. Is, is, is grieving the right word? Cause clearly as well, we've got to separate, out, you know, people that have have lost people through the pandemic, um, and we're not talking about that. We're talking about um, things that have happened in in business here, aren't we? Yeah, and I think I think it is, you know, and that's I think it's it's difficult. I can't think of a better word, but I, I can understand that it, it, it at this particular point in time, it's a word that might make you feel uncomfortable because you you're going to say, well, yeah, there are some people who've lost tremendously. You know, yeah. the, the impact of that loss is awful on them, and 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 therefore to say I'm 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 grieving my project or my yeah it seems you know, a bit sales target seems a bit inconsequential, doesn't it? Really? Yeah. But I still think it is a form of grief. I think it is a form because you're you're mourning a loss. You're mourning the the thing that you had, even if it was just your aspirations, even if you kind of thought, you know, this was the year I'm getting promoted or this was the year I'm, uh, I'm, you know, going to move on to the next role or take more responsibility. And maybe that's been taken away from you. And it's not like, it's not like when you, you know, even if you get made redundant or you lose your job, that there's an outcome and the job ends and then you go on to something else. And it might take time and there might be a, a weird, uncomfortable yeah. period between it. Yeah. But there is a transitionary process that you're kind of forced through. Whereas here, 
that that's not really happening. You're, you're kind of still working in the same place, sort of doing the same thing, and, and potentially not acknowledging what was lost and, that's and that quite, feeling. And, and that's where we sort of come back to the question at the beginning, which is, is holding on to the past, putting the future at risk? Because if you're in a team or in a business where things have changed significantly and you've perhaps got to do business in a different way, um, but we haven't dealt with the fact that the way we did it before has gone, it's ended. We can't do business the way we did. We've got to find a new way of doing business. If we've not dealt with that, hanging on to those elements of the past will get in the way of trying to forge new ways of working. Absolutely. Um, because cause I'm mourning, you know, back to the grieving stuff, I'm mourning the way it was before. Yeah. And and probably in, you know, in that sort of early part of that, you know, the, the transition curve or the, the grief curve or that sort of early denial piece where, you know, easily you could be sitting saying, well, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to wait for what was to come back. Yeah, I'm going to wait for normal to return. Yeah. Um, and and actually right now, that's a really bad place to be because if you're waiting for normal to return, you're not interacting or reacting to what is right now. And we we know that loss affects us more than gain, doesn't it? It does, yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we're uh, again, pre-programmed or predisposed to, to see the negative. So we tend to focus on loss more than we focus on the gains. So, you know, at this particular point... Mm it would be much easier to focus on all of the the things that you've lost because of COVID-19 in your workplace, in your working relationships, in your working style. Uh, and that will probably, for most people, outweigh what they've gained because the gains need to be a, a magnitude time size bigger yeah. to kind of feel like they're equal. Yeah. And, that, and that's not true for all of us because some people will – you know, have had some big gains. You know, some businesses have done quite well out of this. Some individuals have done quite well out of this. But for most people, it will be the things they've lost. And coming to terms with that and acknowledging what's no longer there is really key for leaders and managers. You know, particularly perhaps if people go away on holiday and, you know, have a, they've had a difficult period so far, they have a couple of weeks off, they come back and suddenly you know, reality hits again of we've got to do business in a different way. I, maybe I'm not sure how to do it. I feel I feel a little bit uncomfortable. Um, I want to go back to doing things the way we did before, but I can't. Um, the key role for a leader and a manager is to help people acknowledge what's ended, what's gone. Yeah, it's a really interesting point you raise as well, that it, it would be easy to sit here and think right now and go, well, the loss was March. And you go, yeah, but the sort of the the understanding of that, the acceptance of that, would never have been March, because in March you you went from the world has changed to crisis mode, yeah, fight, which is almost like a, crisis, yeah, which is also sort of psychologically is just a giant distraction. You know, it's mm. it's I'm going to park worrying about any of this. So I think I think you're right to kind of go that that feeling is probably just about to hit most people big time. Well, I think it could I think it could really hit. Um, you know, September, October sort yeah. of time when, you know, we, we know we've been in this game long enough that it, generally for, it just take a normal year, you know, August in Europe, it's, it's holiday time, isn't it? Yeah. You know, and there's some parts of Europe totally shut down and don't really, you know, some businesses don't, corporates don't expect their people in certain parts of Europe to, to do very much at all in August. But we know that when we come back in September, it's that time when everybody says, right, okay, we've got to push now to get to the end of the year. We've got, we've got things we've got to achieve, projects to finish, work to get done. We've got targets to hit. Um, yes, that, it's one of those kind of mini reflection points in the year where people yes. kind of replan, regroup, move so even, forward. Even more so this year, I think, because people, you know, like, like you said a minute ago, we've, we've been fighting from a business point of view, an economic point of view, fighting this crisis. Um, I think people have been working tremendously hard to do that in strange environments. Suddenly, perhaps an opportunity to take some downtime, get away, if you can get away, which is needed. But then all of a sudden, you'll be back September. And have we come to terms with the changes that have really happened in my team, in my business, uh, and the way the world's going to look for the rest of the year? 
Yeah, and like most of these things, we're all going to do it at a different pace. So if you're running a team, the chances are you might have one or two people who are starting to get their head around it. You might be lucky enough to have one or two people who are there. They've got their head around it. They've, they've let go of the past. And, and that could be because they've got a better vision of the future. It could be that the impact of the loss was less on them. I, you know, it's hard mm. to tell. But there are going to be other people who are going to hang on to the past and, and therefore you know, try and revert everything back or compare everything now to their perception of how it was. And of course, you know, when we look backwards, we look backwards with rose-coloured spectacles. So their perception of how it was will probably be much better than it really was anyway. There's a couple of important things, I think, uh, probably more than a couple, but but start with a couple. Um, So one is if you're leading people, it's to take some time to help them acknowledge what's what's not there anymore what's ended in the ways that which you did things before have stopped or changed and then can i just pick up on that before you you move on to the second point i think it's really interesting because it it, very often when i'm working with businesses i think you've probably had the same experience one of the things that people say to us is well everybody knows what's different everybody knows what's changed and you go really you know, does everybody have mm. that clear understanding of it? And so, oh man, I've done this, put people in the room and go, well, just describe it. And what you quickly realize is you get completely different descriptions mm. from different people. Mm. So, so when, when you say acknowledge that things have ended, I think it's really important that that, knowledge, that acknowledgement is out loud, it's public, you get people yeah. to talk about it. Talk so it through, yeah. Yeah, because creating that common understanding of, do you know what? We're not going to be able to do that anymore, or it's not going to be like this anymore. I or think- that process isn't going to be like that, or this, this team isn't doing that anymore. And, and if, if you know, people listen to this, if who, who lead and manage people, if your management style or your leadership style is to deal with problems by ignoring them, <laughs> this this really is not one of those opportunities. Because it, 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 like you've just said, Paul, if we don't talk about this stuff, if we don't deal with it, if we don't acknowledge it, if we don't help people realise that the way that we did it before is not, not going to happen anymore, um, then the past is going to put the future at risk. Yeah, it's going to come and haunt you because people are going to be bringing it up. They're going to be throwing things back at you. And and I think the kind of, the, like I said before, the, the worst bit of that is they're going to co- be comparing everything you're trying to do against a world that no longer exists. Yeah. So, you know, they're going to be going back and saying, well, it was much better then because. So uh, so whilst the, the, the conversation that you have to have with the team might be quite difficult, yeah. Um, so that you can understand why people put that off. Uh, it it really is one that that needs to be needs to be handled and dealt with. And then the second point is to then talk about not everything has changed. There'll be lots of things that have stayed the same. So I had this conversation only a couple of weeks ago with one of our customers, where we were talking about that. You, that, you know, in that business, they've got a really uh, really strong guy leading the team I'm working with, and he's already on this, you know, we're helping him and the team talk about what's what's ending, what's finished, how are they going to do business in a different way. So he's he's really ahead of that and we're helping them do it. But one of the conversations we also had then at the end was, well, what's staying the same though? Because there are lots of elements in the industry they're in and the stuff that they do, that whilst they've got to do things differently, there's tons of things that stay the same. So Yeah, yeah. And, and actually what's staying the same will always outweigh what's changed. Yeah, you know, the uh, reality is change is a very tiny part of our lives and existence. Most of the stuff is relatively the same. Yeah. So you should think about our, our lives. You know, we could say our lives in the work that we do has changed dramatically this year to last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It hasn't really. I mean, we, we still work together. It's the same group of us working together. We work on the same things. We're working a lot with the same clients. What's changed yeah. is the way we deliver some of that work. Yeah. The, but even the work we do, it's not, it's not really that different. No. You know, it's just and, a variation and, of it. And that's probably the same for lots of businesses. You know, you've probably got the same customers. You've probably got the same product. Yeah. You've probably got the same colleagues. You've probably got the same uh, challenges and issues uh, within the team with relationships that you had before, you know, all that sort of stuff is the same. So I think that that being the second point is let's acknowledge that there's lots that's still here that is the same um, while some things have, have ended and changed. 
Yeah, and then when, when you get your head around that, that's going to free people up to go, right, well, what actually needs to be new then? Where do we need to take this? How do we need to do things in the future? Knowing that things have ended, things are, things are no more, um, as opposed to waiting around hoping that one day some beautiful past existence that probably never existed will return and everything will be okay again. So the role of the manager, role of the leader – Two really key important uh, important <laughs> important points, um, as we've just talked about. For when, and you could start this conversation now. You don't have to wait till everybody's back from holiday, but start talking about what's ended. Yeah. And also, let's remind people about what stays the same. Absolutely. Next time on the question is what they're coming back to is a world they don't really understand anymore. So our job as leaders is to put some certainty back into place to allow people very quickly to get a level of understanding of what they need to do, how they need to work, where they need to work, what is it that's now the priority, what isn't the priority, all of that stuff, because everything's up in the air for most of us. Thinking Focus works with teams and business units in organisations around the world, helping them achieve breakthroughs by enabling them to think differently. To find out more about our work and how we could help your organization, go to www.thinkingfocus.com.